This is the Pin Power Podcast with your host, Kara Chase. Every week, Kara teaches you about Pinterest marketing, online entrepreneurship, and productivity. How to's and insider tips to build a strong foundation for marketing your business. You can read more about each episode over on the blog at karachase.com. Now, let's dive in. Hey there. Today, we are going to talk about something that is always fun to talk about this time of year. Maybe a little cheesy, but that's okay. I can get into it. We're talking about gratitude. So this is a blog that I originally wrote way back in 2015, and I'll get into that in a minute. But I love looking back at it every year, updating it, republishing it, and touching base with all of these things I'm about to list out for you. So the blog is 26 Reasons I'm Grateful to Be an Entrepreneur. Let's dive in. Have you ever thought about all those little things that make being an entrepreneur, especially a work from home business owner, really awesome? This blog was originally published in 2015, and it was a fun one to go back and read and think about where I was as an entrepreneur then and where I am now. There have been some really big changes in my life, like we now have two kids instead of one, and my office mate, my office puppy, passed away last year after a long, loving 16 years with our family. But on the whole, these 26 reasons still hold true, and I love every single one of them. I wouldn't have it any other way. You probably know that I focus on Pinterest marketing and management for my clients and agency services, but did you know I absolutely love teaching about entrepreneurship and productivity too? Inside Pinterest Power Up, we talk a lot about owning a business and the marketing systems and lessons that come along with being an entrepreneur. Yes, it's focused on Pinterest, but we support each other and collaborate on so much more. So come join us. To me, Thanksgiving week is the start of family and friends season. It's the time of year you hopefully take a little time to stop and be grateful for all you have and let your loved ones know that you do in fact love them, even if they bug the crap out of you. While I'd like to be more consciously grateful all the time, that's a work in progress. This year has been crazy. Not quite 2007 Britney Spears crazy, but close. I made the decision in March to take the leap into entrepreneurship. Remember, this was something I wrote way back in 2015. I don't quite feel comfortable calling myself a solopreneur, although the term is technically correct, because it smacks of limits and glass ceilings to me. My master plan involves a thriving business that employs others, But right now, I'm in all the hats territory in my home office. Side note, I have achieved that goal. I have a team, and I support others, and I am moving through and building my dream. To be honest, however, even solopreneurs have a supportive team around them, even if they're not paying anyone else for help. I count my family, friends, and a wealth of other solopreneurs I've connected with last year as on my team. They all provide support, advice, an extra set of eyes, and massive amounts of cheerleading whenever I need it. I truly could not keep my head above water if it weren't for them. Of course, I have many other things to be grateful and thankful for besides what I do for a living, but this choice, like no other, has impacted my life the most, husband and kiddo aside. I knew after a few years as a federal agent, I did not want to spend a 25-plus year career working for the government. It's not like TV, folks, let me tell ya. It took 10 years for the time and situation to be right, but when I left, not really knowing what I was going to do next, most people in my life thought I was nuts. I left a six-figure salary, incredible health benefits, and a pension. That's right, a real honest-to-goodness pension. I would have been eligible to fully retire at 47 years old. Seems crazy, right? The only thing that seemed crazy to me was going to work day in and day out with a series of horrible, and I mean horrible, supervisors sitting in my car for days, my health suffering severely, and being a body, just a number. I'm not kidding you, that's the term the government uses. Hey, we need more bodies for a warrant tomorrow morning. While my professional career has been interesting to say the least, since I left the government, every single step 
has been to set myself up to be my own boss. It is not in any way, shape, or form rainbows and kittens. It's simply the hardest professional thing I have ever done. It's an emotional roller coaster with the ever present fear. Can I do this? Will I make it? Can I help support my family? Am I a fraud? Will anyone buy from me? But in between those paralyzing moments, which are getting to be less and less as I persevere and figure it out, there are lots and lots of moments of sheer gratitude. So without further ado, here are 26 reasons I am super duper grateful and thankful to be an entrepreneur in no particular order. Number one, yoga pants. Yes, I'm going to start with that. No explanation necessary. Number two, free-ish coffee. Crappy office coffee or expensive Starbucks? No thanks. Setting my own hours. I'm working more hours than I ever have before, but when I work, it's because I want to for the most part. Sick days. Even if I have work, I must get done. Not worrying about being semi-presentable at an office while I try not to get others sick is really nice. Midday errands. Any errands, Costco, oil change, pedicure, basically anything you have to do out of the house that sucks more when everyone else is there on the weekends. Day drinking. Okay, I don't really do this. Maybe the occasional beer at a late lunch on a Friday afternoon with a friend, but I could if I wanted to. Support network. No one cheerleads for entrepreneurs louder than other entrepreneurs. Find those people. Office dog. Again, I wrote this list in 2015. At the time, she was 13. And I love that she got to hang out with me all day. So what was really cool about looking back at this was she spent most of her life with us home alone during the day while my husband and I were at work. And it was such a gift to be home all day with her the last few years of her life. Number nine, no shitty clients. I choose who I want to work with, and I got over the take any client mindset real quick. Ten, sky is the limit, truly. Now, if I could just clone myself, right? Eleven, time with my kiddos. I really should have led with this, but it's self-explanatory. I have the privilege of creating my day around their needs as much as I need to. I will never get this time back with them, and it's everything. No commute. Again, no explanation necessary here. Commutes suck. Maybe the only redeeming thing was it being podcast listening time. No paying for gas, parking, or lunch. Some people and employers don't realize the huge extra expense that comes with working in an office. The cost savings of working from home make a big difference in our budget. Time to prep dinner. Theoretically, I could stop working and start to prep dinner before I go out to pick up the kiddos, not be rushed to throw something together later. Theoretically, I'm still working on that one, but I could. Talking and or cursing to myself. I get my best ideas when I think out loud. I also have a totally foul mouth, like make a sailor blush. It's nice not to worry about HR issues over repeated F-bombs. 16. No makeup days. I love makeup, but I also really love not wearing makeup. If I'm not meeting anyone professionally and not doing a video or client meeting, then I am barefaced and I don't care. Naps. Yes, that means I might have to make up work later, but if I need to, I can. Loud music. I am a total metalhead, if you did not know that about me already, and I like my music louder than any sort of reasonable volume. Headphones bug me after a while, so it's nice to just turn it up. In-office yoga. I can stop what I'm doing for 10 to 20 minutes of good stretching, without looking like a loon or having anybody stare at me. And I'm usually already wearing yoga pants. So there you go. Neighborhood walks. Every office I've ever worked in has not been conducive to taking a walk in the middle of the day. I love my neighborhood and I try to get in a quick walk often. Networking. The option to meet collaborative partners at pretty much any time is totally convenient. I'm not much for the classic networking breakfast event type thing, 
Um, That is totally not my style, but I do love meeting one-on-one with people. So the option to do that anytime I need to is pretty cool. Day off flexibility and midweek vacation. If the cheapest hotel rate is Monday through Thursday, no problem. I'll just work the weekend to make up for it. Netflix. I need wind up time in the morning. While most people wind down in the evening, I'm usually working. I need time in the morning to wake up and dust off the cobwebs. An hour of Netflix and two cups of coffee and I'm ready to take over the world. This has changed a little bit since adding another kiddo and life just being a little bit different than it was in 2015. The point here is that schedule flexibility of being able to set yourself up to be the most productive in your day, whether that's Netflix or meditating, whatever that wind up time is. Mobile office. Working from home means I do get cabin fever. No problem. I can take my laptop anywhere there's Wi-Fi and still get it done. Natural light. I am fortunate to have a home office set up that lets me gaze out into my beautiful backyard while I'm at my desk. There's simply no substitute for natural light for productivity and well-being. And lastly, number 26, the buck stops with me. It's incredibly clarifying to know it's all up to me. The failures read lessons. The wins, the work, it's all my choice. This awesome sauce list might seem like I'm flitting around doing whatever all day. Quite the opposite, actually. I'm so focused and clear on my tasks and to-dos that I can give myself the gift of that flexibility when I need it. There are many, many days I'm working from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and the errands, the walks, even lunch don't happen. But when I really need to do something or be somewhere that is of the highest priority to me, even if it wouldn't be for a boss, I can do what I need to do. If you want to know more about how I structure my day, it all starts with ending multitasking. Head on over to the blog and I can click you through to a related post all about how to stop multitasking. So what's on your grateful list? Head on over, leave me a comment, hit me up on socials, whatever is the most convenient for you. I'd love to know what you're grateful for. So thanks so much. See ya. Want to know more about Pinterest marketing for your online business? Head over to pinpowermethod.com, the first Pinterest marketing membership designed for entrepreneurs. We'll catch you next time, rockstar. star.